So you know how to dodge the FCS, you know how to aim the FCS, but you don't know how to break the FCS. Not a problem. There are seven ways to break the enemy's lock. Three of these breaks are technical, and four of them are maneuvers. The first three are getting out of range, hiding behind cover, and using jammer equipment. Getting out of range is probably the easiest one to understand. If your enemy is beyond 390 meters, your system will switch from intercept to on target automatically. So if the enemy is moving at 390 meters, you are going to miss your shots. However, you can still lock on and fire missiles without phase two lock. However, if your enemy is 450 meters or beyond, the lock will break after one and a half seconds. At this range, lock-on is no longer possible with any weapon or any FCS. Something else you need to know is the 450 meter limit applies to all FCS's close, medium, and long range. There is no difference in the lock range limit between the closest range FCS and the longest range FCS. They both tap out after 450 meters. The only difference between close and long range FCS's is the speed at which they acquire targets in their preferred combat range. So basically, phase 2 intercept breaks at 390 meters, and the entire FCS system collapses after 450 meters. Now, you can also break an enemy lock behind cover. If the enemy has you in their sights, and if you can keep cover between you and them for 6 seconds, the lock will break. And the only way for them to continue to keep a lock on you is to send out a scan. So if you need to jet out of a battle for a reset, 6 seconds is your goal. Next, we have jammers. Now, jammers could be an entire video on its own. I have a training buddy that I practice sparring with all the time, and he is like a jamming master. He has shown me so many cool things you can do with jammers, but for the sake of this video, we're just gonna keep it simple for the basics. At all ranges, if a jammer is deployed, both you and your target will have your locks broken. From the moment a jammer is deployed, for the next eight seconds, if you are in the cloud, or your enemies are in the cloud, or the cloud is between you and your enemy, nobody's FCS is going to work. The only exception to this rule is if both you and your enemy are in the same cloud. If that's the case, both of you will still be able to lock onto each other. But if anyone leaves the cloud, neither of you will be able to keep a lock on each other. Now jammers don't just break your opponent's lock, they also break your opponent's missile tracking. Missiles have their own lock system, which is separate from the FCS, and you can disrupt that missile targeting system in the middle of their flight. If someone successfully locks on and shoots missiles at you, if you respond with a jammer, the missiles will lose their targeting in the middle of flying towards you and completely miss. Furthermore, this becomes doubly important when the enemy is using exceptionally powerful missiles like the Truenos, the Apertif Siege missiles, and the Coral missiles. All of the most powerful missiles in the game have the slowest lock time, and you can seriously cripple a missile AC if you just fire jammers before the enemy can finish their lock, because as soon as that jammer disrupts their lock, they have to start trying to acquire that lock all over again. So, fun fact, even if the enemy is using the fastest missile lock FCS in the game, the time it takes for the coral missiles to acquire a lock is longer than the time it takes for your jammer to reload. So if you just keep deploying jammer clouds, the enemy will never be able to fire a single missile. Also, you don't have to hit the enemy with the jammer to reap its rewards. You can also just shoot it at the floor where you are, and the enemy will lose the lock because you're inside the cloud, or the cloud is between you and them. So those are the technical ways you can break the enemy's lock. The next four ways are maneuvers that all ACs can use across the board. And I recommend you start implementing these maneuvers into your normal combat tactics to make you as hard to hit as possible. Now you probably know that quick boost breaks the FCS lock. As soon as you quick boost, you force the enemy's FCS back into phase one pre-lock targeting. Likewise, quick boost while assault boosting also breaks the enemy's lock. So if you're trying to rush down your opponent, the quick boost during the assault boost literally forces the enemy's lock to break at the same time. Also very important for you to know, starting the assault boost itself will break the enemy's lock. You don't necessarily have to quick boost after assault boosting. Just activating the quick boost alone will send the enemy's targeting back to phase one. And lastly, jumping itself will break the enemy's lock, resetting the enemy's targeting all the way back to phase one pre-lock. It is also the only maneuver that breaks the enemy's lock that requires no energy. So in an emergency case, if you're completely out of energy and you can't quick boost, you can't assault boost, and something big is about to hit you, just do a jump to the side and it'll probably miss. So quick boost, starting the assault boost, quick boosting while assault boosting, and jumping will all break the enemy's lock and force the intercept system to start over. 
Thanks for watching, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.